Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. We will continue our discussion on collusive oligopoly model in this session also. So, if you remember in the last session, we talk about the different kind of collusion and uh, primarily there are two type of collusion, one is explicit collusion, another is tacit collusion. And one of the most common form of explicit collusion is uh, cartel and uh, cartel is generally a joint agreement among the oligopolist firms to maximize the profit. And here generally the central agency decides the price and output. There are two major type of cartel. One is uh, cartel ma maximizing at joint profit, centralized cartel. And second ca type of cartel is market sharing cartel. And again market sharing cartel has comes in two form. One is on the basis of market sharing on, on the basis of non-price competition. And secondly the market share on the basis of quota. And if you look at uh, the cartel is sustainable and uh, there are some prerequisite to form the cartel also and this is this will this is going to be sustainable if the all the farms they are producing homogeneous product and uh, uh, if you look at all the farms they are producing homogeneous product and that gives the scope at least to uh, follow a uniform price what is whatever is followed by the uh, cartel or whatever is the cartel price that becomes easy to follow by all the farms. So, today we will discuss on the other form of collusive model that is uh, uh, other form of collusive model that is price leadership. Here we will discuss the price leadership model in three contexts. One is when the price leadership is price is decided by low cost farm, when price is decided by dominant farm and when the price is decided by the by the barometric farm. So, to start with uh, uh, we know what is price leadership first. So, it is a form where one firm sets price, others firms follow it because it is advantageous to them or because they prefer to avoid uncertainty. So, if you look at the collusion, the major objective is to avoid the uncertainty, uncertainty in term of getting the profit, un uncertainty in term of uh, being in the market or sustained in the market. So, in case of price leadership, uh, one firm set the price and other firm just follow it because they feel that by following this price and they are getting some amount of profit and there is no uh, uh, uncertainty associated with what kind of profit they are going to get it. If the product is homogeneous and if there are no transport cost, the same price will be charged by all the firms because product is homogeneous, no transport cost. So, assume that, that all the cost of production comes within the identical frame on whatever the price follow uh, price decided by the uh, one firm generally that is acceptable to all. But if there is a transport cost or if the product are not homogeneous, maybe that time whatever the price decided by the one firm that may not be followed by the others. However, if the product is differentiated, prices will differ, but the direction of their change will be same and the same price differential will be more or less maintained. So, how they tackle with the price uh, if the product is differentiated? They will initially they will fix up the price of all the products, but they will control their direction of change. If it is going to increase, if it is going to decrease, they will give a range and in that range only the price has to increase or the price has to decrease. If it is homogeneous product, they have to charge a, uh, a constant price, same price for all the products, but if it is a differential product or if it is a uh, heterogeneous product in this case, they will fix up the price at once and the direction of the change of the price has to be controlled by the firm which decides the price. So, in this case the same price differential is going to maintain more or less for all this category of the product when it is a heterogeneous products in the market. So, we will discuss uh, three types of price leadership. One is price leadership by a low cost firm, second one is the price leadership by a large dominant firm and third one is the barometric price leadership. 
to start with when we uh, talk about the price leadership of a low cost firm let us know what can be a low cost firm and why we call it low cost firm low cost firm is one where the cost of production is less to produce the product there may be number of possibilities that why farms get into or how come farms reach to a situation where they become the low cost farm the basic argument for this goes that if it is a large farm and the scale of operation is more in the long run the per unit cost decreases and they emerge as a low cost farm second again if it is a mass production again the same reason if a mass production large scale uh, in the long run generally they get into a situation where the per unit cost decreases goes on decreases they reaches the minimum and then it increases so low cost farm is one farm which generally uh, lies in the decreasing portion of the long run average cost curve till the time it is reaching to the minimum cost so to produce the same product if there are number of farms in the market if one farm is producing that it is lower cost of production h compared to other uh, h compared to the other farm generally they are known as the low cost farm and they are low cost farm maybe because of economy of scale and again if you want to specifically find out a reason maybe efficiency of uh, raw material efficiency of inputs efficiency of technology efficiency of the men power involved in the production process they become they uh, makes the uh, farm become the low cost farm now if the low cost farm generally decide the price in a market in one kind, kind of price leadership model we find that the low cost farm decides the price if the low cost farm decides the price let's find out graphically and also numerically that how the outcome is on the other farms in the market or why the low cost farm is being chosen is the price leader particularly in this type of market or in this type of arrangement of collusive model collusive model of oligopoly so we'll see the price leadership of low cost farm okay so we'll take the demand curve we assume there are uh, mainly two farm one is uh, farm 1 another is farm 2 so uh, we'll uh, we'll uh, take the demand curve as average revenue 1 and also average revenue 2 and this is in the uh, this is shown in the form of the demand curve we'll take the marginal revenue curve that is mr1 equal to mr2 we'll take cost function we'll take separate cost function for both the firm so one we have h marginal cost 1 and second we have the marginal cost 2 so we have taken the demand curve where this is the average revenue curve of firm 1 and also equal to the average revenue curve of firm 2 we have taken the marginal revenue curve Uh, in the form of mr where mr1 is equal to mr2 we have taken two separate cost function because here the leadership comes in the form of the low cost firm so mc1 is the cost function for firm 1 and mc2 is the cost function for firm 2 now to find out what is the price to be follow we get one point here where marginal revenue 1 and marginal revenue marginal revenue 1 intersect the marginal cost of uh, farm 1 and we get a price which is equal to maybe we can uh, okay this is marginal revenue 1 okay so here we'll get a price which is equal to p1 and correspondingly also we'll get a price level taking the point where mr2 is equal to mc2 we get one more price that is p2 let's call it p2 star okay now what is the thumb rule here since the price leadership is by the low cost firm both the firm they have to accept the price which is given by the low cost firm farm price given by the low cost firm and what is the price given by the low cost firm 
that is P 1. So, ideally this P 1 should be equal to also P 2. So, this is the price since firm 1 is the low cost firm and according to the low cost firm cost function, we take the M C 1 is equal to M R 1 corresponding to that we get the price which is equal to P 1 and also we get the quantity which is equal to Q 1. And this is the price the uh, firm 2 they have to also follow it because they have accepted low cost firm as the price leader and they are going to produce Q 2 star. Ideally, they should produce Q 2 star when the price is P 2, but since they are following this uh, price given by uh, firm 1, they are also producing the output that is Q 1 is equal to Q 2. Now, if you look at uh, the price is given by the low cost firm, that is why this is lower. Corresponding to firm 1, we have firm 2, which is a having a higher cost function and if higher cost function, if the price is being charged on the basis of higher cost function, ideally the price should be P 2 star. But since they have accepted this firm 1 as the low cost firm and they have to be the price taker in this case, they will take a price which is equal to P 1 and they will produce that is Q 1. But ideally what is their profit maximizing model? Profit maximizing model is they will produce less, but they will charge a higher price in order to produce it. So, when the price is given by the low cost firm, the high cost firm they have to accept it, but at in the long run if the price is going to be continuously lowest as compared to their profit maximizing price, they may not accept the firm as the leader and they will uh, they will not into be the collusion, they will go out of the collusion and they will independently change, uh, independently charge their price on the basis of their profit maximizing level of output. Because they will feel that continuously in the long run also if they are uh, charging a price, price which is much lower to their cost function or much lower to their market price what it had, would have been on their profit maximizing level, then in that case they will go out of the collusion and they will charge independently their price. Now, we will uh, just take a numerical to understand this uh, price leadership by the low cost firm. So, we will get two demand function that is uh, Q 1 is equal to 50 minus 0 0.5 P 1, P 1 is equal to 100 minus 2 Q 1, this is for firm 1, then we will look for firm 2. So, for firm 2 Q 2 is equal to 50 minus uh, 0 0.5 P 2 and from here we can find out this P 2, P 2 is equal to 100 minus 2 Q 2. Then we will take the cost function T C 1 is equal to 100 plus 20 q 1 plus 2 q 1 square and total cost 2 is equal to 48 plus 36 q q 2 plus 2 q 2 square. So, q 2 is equal to 50 minus 0 0.5 p 2, p 2 is equal to 100 minus 2 q 2. This is for firm 2, this is for firm 1. So, here firm 1 is the low cost firm and firm 2 is high cost firm. So, ideally the price has to set by the low cost firm and that has to be followed by the high cost firm in order to operate in the market. To find out the price for on the basis of low cost firm, what we have to do? We need to find out the marginal revenue 1 with respect to firm 1, we need to find out the marginal cost for firm 1 and we will equalize the marginal revenue marginal cost in order to get the profit maximizing level of output and profit maximizing level of price and that price has to be accepted by firm 2. Then we will find out the price with respect to firm 2 and we will find that whether that is the same amount of profit what they are getting if they are charging the price on their own. So, to find this uh, marginal revenue and marginal cost, we will find out the total revenue 1, total revenue 1 is P 1 Q 1 
So, P 1 is equal to 100 minus 2 Q 1 multiplied by Q 1. So, that comes to 100 Q 1 minus 2 Q 1 square. Marginal revenue will take as T T R 1 with respect to Q 1. So, the, uh, that will continue or maybe we can find out the profit. Profit is total revenue 1 minus total cost 1. So, 100 Q 1 minus 2 Q 1 square which is our total revenue 1 minus 100 plus 20 Q 1 square plus 2 Q 1 square. So, this is our total cost. So, this is total cost 1. Now, we will if we simplify this, we will get uh, uh, total revenue minus total cost 1 in order to get profit. So, this will be if you multiply this, th if you will deduct this total revenue 1 from total cost 1, then we get 80 q 1 minus 4 q 1 square minus 100 and we will take the first order of derivative in order to find out the profit and uh, in order to find out the profit price and output. So, that will become 80 minus 8 q 1 equal to 0 and q 1 is equal to 10. So, if q 1 is equal to 10, p 1 is equal to 100 minus 2 q 1. So, 100 minus 2 multiplied by 10 that will come to 80. So, P 1 is Q P 1 is equal to 80, Q 1 is equal to 10. That is, if the price is decided on the basis of the low cost firm, P 1 has to be equal to 80. Now, we will find out for firm 2 and we will see whether if they are following their profit maximizing formula, whether they are also getting the same amount of price or they are getting a different price. So, to find this we need to get the total revenue 2 and total cost 2 because that will give us the profit. So, total revenue 2 is equal to 100 q 2 minus 2 q 2 square and pi 2 will be equal to 100 q 2 minus 2 q 2 square minus the total cost 2. So, that is 48 plus 36 q 2 plus 2 q 2 square. So, if we simplify this we get 64 q 2 minus 4 q 2 square minus 48 and to will take the derivative in order to get the uh, uh, price and output. So, that has to be equal to 0 to maximize pi we need to take this first order derivative equal to 0. So, what is the first order derivative that is 60 minus 8 q 2 has to be equal to 0. So, 8 q 2 is equal to 0 uh, uh, equal to 64 q 2 is equal to 8. This is the output for the firm 2. If you uh, put the value of q 2 we is equal to 8, we will get p 2 is equal to 84. So, this is if the profit maximizing level on the basis of the firm 1. So, firm 2. So, this is the price and quantity if firm 2 decides what should be the price and quantity. But, uh, since this is a low cost firm, we will take price is equal to 80, because uh, this is the collusion that the low cost firm will decide the price. And the outcome for this is that the uh, P 1 is equal to 80 is going to be followed in the market. If P 1 is going to be 80 followed in the market, what is the outcome? Outcome is there is a reduction in the profit by uh, reduction in the profit by firm 2. And what will be the reduction? If you calculate the profit by taking the price 80 and 84, the profit will reduce from 26 to 
22. So, this is the outcome, the reduction in the profit is the outcome for the farm too, if they are following a low cost farm. But uh, here if you look at what is the arrangement, the arrangement is that low cost firm has to follow the, uh, the high cost firm has to follow that whatever the price decided by the uh, low cost firm. Because the when they are getting into an agreement, they are colluding uh, to get the maybe the market share or to maximize the joint profit, the agreement is that the low cost firm has to decide the price. Then we will go to the next uh, kind of price leadership model and the next kind of price leadership leader, uh, leadership model is where the price is set by the dominant firm. So, in this case the price leadership uh, typically in this form of oligopoly here one dominant firm sets price and all the smaller firm in the industry follow its pricing policy. So, one, uh, one firm is going to typically the dominant firm they are going to or decide the price and other firms they are going to follow it. Now, before going into the detail that what is the outcome or how the price output of the other firms get affected, we will understand what is the meaning of a dominant firm, how the firm become emerge as a dominant leader and uh, what is their trait when they become the dominant firm in the market. So, if you look at uh, the first feature of uh, oligopoly, we say that even if there are large number of firms in the oligopoly, at least few of them have to lead the market or few of them have to dominate the market, right? at least two of them should have the having the mar largest market share in the uh, typical market. So, oligopoly market is dominated by few firms among the one way, one may be the larger player, at least one or two have to the larger player. So, if you take the example when you talk about a search, a search engine, Google is the largest uh, market share. When you talk about a chip, Intel is the largest market share. When you talk about a mobile phone, Nokia is the largest market share. When you talk about the uh, PC segment, IBM is the, um, IBM is the largest market player. When you talk about at least uh, before the liberalization, when you talk about the car industry, Maruti was having the highest market share. When you talk about a steel furniture, Godrej is having the larger player. So, in all this segment, if you look at there are many firms, but when it comes to the larger player, they are the larger player in their own segment. And that is why they emerge as a dominant firm, because they are having a largest market share as compared to the other firm, those who are having a smaller market share. The other firms here, what is the uh, basic or what is the success of this dominant firm depends, the other firms acknowledge the leadership of the largest firm for the price determination. So, when it comes to dominant firm, even if they are the large, they have the largest market share, they are the large firm in the market, the other firms should accept them as the large firm or the other firm should acknowledge when they are, uh, when they are giving the or when they are uh, fixing up the price, the other firm should follow it. And in other way, we can say that the other firms have to accept this firm as the large market share, then only they will follow the price whatever decided by the dominant firm. So, dominant firm is a leader in term of market share or presence in all segment or just being the pioneer in the particular product agency, uh, product category. So, dominant firm may be the leader in term of the market share, either they are having a maximum market share or their presence in all the segment or just being a pioneer in the particular product category in all these three uh, when they are having this all these three characteristic or one of these three characteristic they can be the dominant firm. So, this dominant firm is very or if they are getting into a leader they have to very large in uh, size an economies of scale produce optimum output at which he is able to maximize the return. So, this uh, price leaders or the dominant firm has to be very large in sign and they have to earn economies of scale then only they can consider as the dominant firm because they are having a large market share and they are getting the profit and they should produce at the optimum output, they should not uh, produce at a output level where which leaves some excess capacity for the firm. When it comes to a uh, trait of the dominant firm, the dominant firm can be either benevolent or they can be the exploitive firm. Either they can be benevolent for the other firms in the market or they can be the exploitative in firm in the market. 
Now, who are the who is a benevolent farm or who are the benevolent farm? The benevolent farm allow other farm to exist by fixing up a price at which small farm may also sell. So, when it if the dominant or the market leader is the benevolent firm, their trade says that if they are fixing up a price, they fix at that level where even the small firm can also survive. So, they generally fix up with the price which is above the marginal cost of the small firms, then only that will uh, that will actually uh, lead the small firm to survive in the market or that price leads the firms to get some amount of the profit at specifically the small firms in the market to get some amount of the profit. Now, how the firms they become a benevolent firm? Because all the dominant firm they are not the benevolent firm, some firms they are there, uh, some, ben uh, some dominant firm are there, they generally the exploit other firms taking the cue from their, the dominant firm or taking the cue that they are the large firm in the market. Now, what situation leads to this creation of this benevolent firm? It lets other exist, so it does not have to face allegation of the monopoly creation. So, if someone is having a 90 percent share, rather than getting into the um, allegation that they are trying to monopolize, they become nice to the other small firms and they allow them to survive. In that way, they also avoid the allegation of the monopoly creation and they become emerge as a benevolent trader because they allow the small firm to stay in the market. So, one way to get, a, get away from the allegation of the monopolization or the monopoly creation, they become the benevolent firm. Second, it earns sufficient margin at the price and still remain market leadership. So, whatever the price they are charging, they earn maximum or the sufficient margin at this price and still retain the market leadership. And success of this type of leadership depends on the assumption that the other will follow the leader. So, when it comes to uh, this price leadership by a dominant firm, obviously, if you look at uh, from the angle of small firm also, they cannot compete directly with the large firm. So, in that case, the only options available to them that they are following the leader and if they are following the leader, may be the out of goodwill, the, if the dominant firm is a benevolent firm, they will at least think about the small firm and they will fix up a price which, which is lower than the, which is lower than their standard and by with that price at least the small firms getting some amount of the profit. Then the other category of uh, dominant firm is the firm who exploits the small firms in the market. And how they how do they exploit the small firm in the market? They fixes a price at which small inefficient player may not survive and thus it gains a large share of the market. So, in this case the firm set up a price to exploit the small firm and what they do? They set a price in such a level where the small firm or the firm those who are not doing well in the last uh, period they are going to get out of this market or they will get the they will get the exit out of this market. So, in this case uh, the price whatever given by the firm that will not suit the small inefficient player in the market, they will be out of the market and in this case the dominant firm will become more dominant because they also get the share of the uh, of a small firm those who have already exit out of this market. So, we will see the graphical explanation and new algebraic explanation of this uh, dominant firm. Generally, graphically how we get the demand curve of the dominant firm, how the supply curve gets, uh, gets uh, extracted from the supply curve for the rest of the firm and we will see uh, how generally the small firm is whether it is suitable for them till how long the small firm will be there in the market, at what stage generally they go, go out of this market. So, we will get a uh, demand curve, this is the market demand curve, then we will get a supply curve and correspondingly we will get the price. Okay. And
this is the demand curve of the uh, large firm this is the price then we will find out the this is the marginal revenue curve then we will get the marginal cost corresponding to marginal revenue and marginal cost we will get the price that is by the uh, dominant firm that is P2 this is P3 this is P1 this is E, this we can call as P2 dash, this is our D, DL and here we can call it as B1, here we can call it as E, this is our Q, this is our O. Okay. So, let us understand this graph now. This uh, SS, if you look at, suppose uh, we understand that there is one large firm. and number of small farms. Okay. So, this uh, supply curve if you look at this uh, S you can call it S S des, this is the aggregate supply curve of the small farms, this is not the aggregate, this is here the supply of the dominant farm is not added, this is the aggregate supply curve of only the num small farms that is there in the market. And how we get this SS dash? This is the horizontal summation of the marginal cost curve of all the small firms. This demand curve is the market demand curve where we have also added the demand for the dominant firm product. The difference between the uh, horizontal difference between the demand curve and uh, supply curve, if you look at that will give us the demand between or uh, that will give us the demand by the dominant firm. So, if you look at in that through that we get the demand function that is D D L that is the demand function for the large firm or the demand function of the dominant firm. So, the horizontal distance between the supply curve and the supply curve of the small firms and the market demand curve that gives us the demand curve of the dominant firm. So, the uh, if you look at the logic is very simple, total demand is this much, this is the total supply of the small firm. So, whatever the gap between the market demand and the supply of the small firms, from there generally the immerse the demand curve for the large firm, because the rest of the demand has to be given from the dominant firm. Now, price falls below at any point of time, if the price falls below P 1, which is the market price decided on the basis of the supply curve of small one and the market demand. If price falls below P 1, generally the demand curve for the large firm increases, because this, this is the market demand. This is the demand curve for the large firm. If price falls below this, the demand curve for this uh, dominant firm increases, because once price decreases, demand is more than the supply and that leaves the scope for the more demand for the dominant firm. Now, how we get the price P 2? We get the price P 2 following the marginal cost and marginal revenue rule. So, doing this we get this price P 2 and at this price P 2 the total demand is P 2 B and small firm supply only the uh, amount here if you look at this is the P 2 A. So, here we can call it this is the B. So, at this price if the price fixed by marginal cost marginal revenue rule that is by the dominant firm, because price has to set by dominant firm. This is the marginal revenue curve of the dominant firm, this is the marginal cost for, uh, function of the dominant firm. Taking this the price is decided by the dominant firm. If the price is decided by the dominant firm at this price small firm just supply this much, because this is the supply curve for the small firm and the large firm they supply, what is the large firm they supply? Small, la, large firm they supply A B. So, in this case if you look at 
this is the this has to be given for the demand for the dominant firm and in this case this is what they are going to this is the demand for the dominant firm and this is what they are going to supply. If the price is P 3 up to this if you look at the supply given by the small firm is 0 and at this point now this is entirely the demand for the large firm because the supply is not going to get by the small firm. So, the entire demand is get satisfied from the small firm uh, from the large firm because small firm is not supplying anything when price is P 3. Any price below this P 3 supply curve for the small firm is not existing because this is the price beyond which the sub, uh, small firm is not going to supply in the market or small firm, small firm is not going to sell in the market. So, that is the reason if you look at when the price is given by the dominant firm when the price leadership is by the dominant firm the amount what the supply the sub getting supplied by the small firm is less and the amount which is getting supplied by the large firm is more. So, that is how the dominant firm if they are deciding the price they are supplying more and the small firm is supplying less. So, now we will say uh, numerically whether the share gets more by the uh, large firm when they set the price and uh, less by the small firm because they are just following the price or it gets a equal share or it gets at least a proportionate share. So, to summarize this how we can say this typically dominant firm uh, the, there is a market demand and the demand comes to all the firms in the market and we get the supply curve for the small firms on the uh, where we do not consider the supply curve for the dominant firm. So, the, the gap between the supply given by the small firms and the mark total market demand for the product that generally the demand curve for the dominant firm. So, we identify the demand curve from there we find out the marginal revenue curve, we get the marginal cost curve, this is the marginal cost curve on that basis we set the price. When the price set by the dominant firm this is the this is the amount of supply that comes from the uh, dominant firm and this is the amount of supply that comes from the small firm. And uh, correspondingly if at any point of time if the dominant firm would like to if the dominant firm is going to exploit this number of small firms they will reduce the price and if they are reducing the price from P 2 to P 3 small firm is not supplying any more product in the market or they are not taking care of the demand market demand and that what they will do they will go out of this market and the large market or the dominant market they get all the share of the total market and they become the monopoly leader. So, in this case if you look at the uh, if it is a benevolent firm they will not go beyond P 2 they will give at least small portion of the market to be shared by the small firms, but if there if the firm uh, if the uh, dominant firm is not benevolent rather they are in the exploit in nature. So, they will prefer to uh, charge the price P 3 which is much below P 2 because at this price the small firm uh, will become inefficient they will not able to survive they will go out of the market and the entire market share will go to the large firm. So, here the uh, trait of this small dominant leader comes whether they are in, in a way to exploit the small firms or they are the benevolent leader because there it will make the difference that in this case this price leadership will lead to the monopoly situation or it will not lead to a monopoly situation. Then we will just take a, a numerical or algebraic solution to this dominant firm leader in order to understand that how the share gets divided between the dominant firm and the small firms. So, we will uh, assume that there are 6 firms in the market. So, one each dominant firm and rest 5 each small firms. Okay. So, this is the total market demand that is 100 minus 2 p and Q s is the supply of the small firms, supply function of the small firms excluding the 
large firm. So, Q s is equal to 10 plus p, this is the combined supply function. To find the uh, equilibrium uh, output or equilibrium without the dominant firm, demand that is Q m has to be equal to Q uh, has to be equal to the supply, and if you take uh, Q m is equal to Q, uh, Q m is equal to 100 minus 2 p and Q s is equal to 10 plus p, we get 3 p is equal to 90, p is equal to 30. So, equilibrium price without the supply of the dominant firm, we get p is equal to 30 and what will be the supply here? If you put the value of uh, the p here, then it is 10 plus p. So, that comes to 10 plus 30, which is equal to 40. How do you interpret this 40 now? This is this 40 is the total supply comes from the this five small firms. So, once we know the market demand, once we know the total supply, we can find out what is the demand for the dominant firm. So, total supply is 40 units. Now, we will find out what is the market demand and the difference will give, give, will give us what is the demand for the dominant firm. So, total supply is by the small firm is equal to 40 units and price is equal to 30 units. Now, this is the demand function for the dominant firm. So, this is Q m minus Q s, Q m is the total market demand, Q s is the supply of the small firm. So, Q m minus Q s, so this is 100 minus 2 p minus 40. So, 60 minus 2 p that is the demand function for the dominant firm. So, total cost for uh, dominant firm is given that is 50 plus 60 q d plus 0 0.25 q d square, this is the total cost function. From here, we can find out the marginal cost function for the dominant firm. So, that will come as 60 plus uh, 0 0.5 q d. From the demand function, we will try to find out the total revenue function. From total revenue function, we will find out the marginal revenue function. Just now, we calculated the marginal cost function. So, we will follow the profit maximizing rule, the marginal cost marginal revenue rule in order to find out the price. So, to find this, we will find now total revenue for uh, uh, demand uh, function. For this, we need, we need the price, uh, uh, price uh, this uh, uh, demand function for the dominated firm and also the price for the dominated firm. So, how to find out this price of D? This is 30 minus 0 0.5 Q D and how we got this? Because our Q D is equal to 60 minus 2 P. Then uh, we will find this total revenue is equal to now 30 minus 0 0.5 Q D multiplied by Q D. So, that comes to 30 Q D minus 0 0.5 Q D square. This is the total revenue for dominated firm. Then we will find out the marginal revenue of dominated firm that is derivative of total uh, revenue with respect to d q d and that comes to 30 minus uh, q d, this is the marginal revenue for d. 
So, we have a marginal cost function what we got previously, now we have the marginal revenue function. To find the price and quantity, now we will take the marginal cost and marginal revenue rule. So, at profit maximizing equilibrium, marginal cost of D has to be equal to the marginal revenue of D. So, 6 plus 0 0.5 Q D has to be equal to um, marginal revenue for D that is uh, 30 minus Q D. Then uh, uh, simplifying this we can get 1.5 Q D is equal to 24 Q D is equal to 16. So, this is the demand that is quantity that has to be produced by dominant firm. This is the price, price is uh, again 30 minus 0 0.5 Q D. So, this will give 30 minus 0 0.516. So, this comes to 22. So, price is 22, quantity demanded is 16. Now, this price, this price 22 has to be accepted by the small firm, because this is the price leadership model, where there is the dominant firm has to be, has to set the price and small firm simply they have to follow this. So, taking this price now, what will be the market demand? That is Q m. So, Q m is equal to 100 minus 2 p. So, that comes to 100 minus 44 that is come to 56. This is our total market demand. What is the market demand for the dominant firm? The market demand for the dominant firm is the 16 and this is the total market demand. So, rest this 56 minus 16 40 unit has to be supplied by the smaller firm. So, if you uh, try to analyze the world from here, price is 22 that is followed by small firms and if the total market demand if you look at it is uh, 56 out of this, if not even less than one third is supplied by the, uh, less than one third is supplied by the dominant firm and rest is supplied by the smaller firm. So, maybe we can say that uh, this is a kind of a price leadership or the dominant leader is such that at least it is benevolent in nature, because uh, that firm is setting a price such that at least more than two third is getting supplied by the five smaller firm and the dominant firm itself is supplying only less than one third of the total market demand. So, at least from the result if you want to analyze and if you want to read between the line, at least you can say that the price is set by the dominant firm which is benevolent in nature, because he is just supplying uh, less than one third of the total market demand and rest all is supplied by the uh, smaller firms. So, in case of um, low cost firm, generally the low cost firm set the price, other firm follow it. In case of dominant firm, dominant firm set the price, others they will uh, follow it. And the third category of the price leadership is if you look at it is the kind of more subjective in nature, when uh, we will find that there is no clear case of a low cost firm or no clear case of a dominant firm. In that case, uh, what model to be followed? And in this case, the model follow each price leadership by the barometric firm. And here, why the need comes from the barometric firm? Because there is no clear cut, uh, uh, clear cut emergence of a dominant firm or clear cut emergence of a low cost firm. So, there is evidence in the sum market that there is no single player is so large to emerge as leader but there may be one firm which has better understanding of the market. So, the firm may not be large in nature, they are not operating in the large scale of operations, but when it comes to uh, making a uh, leader, whether to make that firm as the leader, they are considered to be the leader, because at least they have a better understanding of the market. So, this firm acts like a barometer for the firms 
and why they are uh, known as the barometer firm or the how why they are considered as the barometer of the market because they have the better industry intelligence and can preempt and reinterpret the external environment in an effective manner. So, suppose there is a change in the government policy, suppose there is a crisis, suppose there is a event which has some uh, influence on the uh, price and quantity combination or the demand of the market. So, in this case generally the barometric firm they get into a situation where they are, uh, they are the best judge to they are the best uh, firm to judge the event and uh, lead the price output uh, decision on that uh, manner. So, they are considered as the barometric firm and uh, the, the barometric firm should act as the leader, they should decide the price and the other firms they have to simply follow this. So, either the uh, so three kind of models or three kind of arrangement in case of a price leadership model, either the price has to set by the low cost firm or the price is to set up by the dominant firm or the price is to set up by the barometric firm. So, in the last uh, couple of session we discuss about a oligopoly market structure uh, identifying two different kind of uh, model, one is collusive models and another is the non-collusive model. Non-collusive model where the oligopolist firm they compete with each other and in case of collusive model they generally collude together to maximize the profit and also reduce uncertainty and in the way if it look at to look at that at least get some amount of the profit from the collusion. Uh, next session we will see that how game theory generally helps or game theory as a tool helps the firms to uh, or game theory as a tool helps the uh, analysis to analyze the firms behavior or the group behavior in the oligopoly market or typically how the economics of cooperation what comes from the group behavior of the oligopoly firm generally whether it is competition or whether it is collusion both are considered as the group behavior and next next class we will say game theory as a mathematical tool how it helps to identify both the economics of cooperation whether it is competition or whether it is collusion.